Well, there's so much understanding to cover on the discerning of spirits. And I want to give you some more teaching on Mark chapter 9. There is so much in this particular portion of Scripture. And uh, we're looking at the subject of this person who had a son, and the son, of course, uh, he had a dumb spirit, and it was also referred to as a dumb and deaf spirit later on in verse 25. We're looking at Mark chapter 9. And what happened to the uh, man was that it says, verse 18, Wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pines away. And I spoke to your disciples that they could not cast him out, or that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. So they brought him to Jesus. Verse 20, And they brought him unto him, and when he, the Spirit, saw him, that is Jesus. Again, as you're reading these portions, we have to discern the difference between what is flesh and what is spirit. We said discern means to ascertain the identity of evil spirits, to distinguish between. And spirit, the na is it the natural spirit of man, the flesh we're talking to, or what? But he is referring to the spirit, or the evil spirit, housed in the man. And when the spirit saw Jesus, straightway the spirit tore him. He began to tear at his flesh. Why? Because the spirit recognized Jesus. Let me tell you that spirits will recognize you. Evil spirits know you. If they knew Jesus, they will know you because the Spirit of Christ dwells in you, and spirit knows spirit. I oftentimes can come to people and talk with them, and I say to them, my, you have a sweet spirit. They have the presence of Christ in them, and I sense that beautiful, sweet presence of Christ. Or sometimes a person may have an evil spirit, and I sense that too. But by the same token, people who have evil spirits will know you because Christ is housed in you, and they sense that presence of Christ in you. I have walked down a sidewalk, minding my own business, and I love to look at people while I'm walking. They call us people watchers or whatever. And I like looking at people. I think probably I enjoy looking at people more than I do looking in the store windows, the shop windows to see what's there. <laughs> well, while I was walking down the street and looking, I happened to notice this man. Now, I wasn't doing anything other than I just observed him. He happened to be looking in another direction. But the minute that he turned and saw me coming towards him, I said nothing to him. I did not say hello. I said nothing. But when he saw me, do you know what he did? His eyes changed countenance. He got kind of a snarly look on his face. He fixed himself a big wad of spit, very quickly, I might add, and he went, and he spit out right down in front of my feet, and I had to literally jump back so that it would not land on my feet. Ugh, is right. Now, should I be offended at this man and turn around and hear to him and say, you nasty, nasty character? <laughs> well, first of all, when you start to recognize spirit, you are not so easily offended at what happens. And as I went on by him, as he went on by me, I thought, ah, praise the Lord, you recognize me, eh? It was an evil spirit housed in that man that vehemently almost hated my insides at this point. They know you. Sure they do. Another occasion, I was uh, with a friend and she and I were sitting in a restaurant. We had come out of a meeting where we'd been ministering the things of God. We just sat in the restaurant across from the table from each other. And our arm, my arm, was just laying over the back of the seat because the back of the seat just came up to the shoulders. 
two more people came in and sat in the booth behind us, a man and a woman. I don't know whether they were man and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend or just people, I don't know. But the man had his back to me and the woman was facing my back. And all of a sudden, I heard a <laughs> and I thought, my goodness, what kind of a noise is that? And I turned around to look and what should I see but this man looking right square at me going <laughs> and I thought praise the Lord now I turned and looked at the woman who was sitting across from him and she's sitting there looking at this man she's wondering what I, I, you know like I've never seen him act like this before well why should somebody start hissing at you while they're sitting I, I never even said hello to these people. They wouldn't have known me from Adam. But spirits know you. As soon as that spirit saw Jesus, the spirit recognized Jesus and now began to act up. Let me tell you that oftentimes you can find, you go into meetings, go into places, and people are acting nice and normal. You'd think that everything is fine. And all of a sudden, people start, some people start acting so strange, and just as I've told you, they start hissing and carrying on. Uh, there's all kinds of manifestations. Never be afraid of a manifestation. Somebody going, <laughs> isn't going to hurt you, you know? <laughs> I always like to know what's in behind that little effort. And basically, it's a spirit housed in behind, not the person. Well, I didn't do any casting out. I just recognized that it was there and did nothing about it at that point. However, um, when I was teaching on the subject of the gift of the discerning of spirits, a man and his wife were in my meetings, and uh, all of a sudden, the woman spoke up and she said, that's it, that is it. I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, she said, my husband had taken me out for a dinner for Mother's Day, m myself and my two children, and she says, we had finished our meal, we came out to the checkout counter to pay our bill, and we were standing there just waiting for the girl to finish ringing it up. All of a sudden, a woman came up from out of nowhere. They hadn't even noticed her until she came right up towards them. She, too, was coming to the checkout counter. She said, I, we never spoke to her. She never spoke to us, excepting she turned and she looked at me in the most snarly look and she looked at my husband and she said her mouth kind of curled up a little bit and with a loud voice so that everyone in the restaurant could hear oh i suppose you think you're christians don't you real goody goodies aren't you who do you think you are anyway she said i was so embarrassed i thought oh my goodness what have i done what did we do, you know, this, this person to say such horrible things like this? And now at this point, every eye is on them. Well, you see, that evil spirit in the hat woman recognized the spirit of Christ in them. However, they did not know about the gift of the discerning of spirits, and that evil spirit literally brought them to shame in that restaurant and reproach. So spirits know you, can't hurt you. This is what we're trying to impart to you as we go along. Learn not to be at home. Be out to lunch when spirits start attacking you. <laughs> oh, bless God. You know also the portion of scripture where many spirits came and recognized Jesus. In fact, they recognized him before the people did. They said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. You're Jesus of Nazareth. And then also on another occasion, uh, we're going to go into this a little bit later on, where they said, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? Uh, that's a good one. We're going to have fun studying that one. But nonetheless, spirits do know you. And uh, rest assured that you should consider it an honor and a privilege that they do know you. Why? because you have the power of the Most High God within you. We're not in a warfare with people, with flesh and blood, but with spirits and spirits only. Now, I want also to understand 
a little bit more about um, some of these things here that we're talking about. So let's look at this portion of the scripture here now in Mark chapter 9 regarding where it is saying that it's deaf and dumb. Verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, unto the spirit, not unto the man, but unto the spirit, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Now let's look at that one. We're going to see that verse 26 following that, but let's just look at this one, dumb and deaf spirit. Does this mean, Mary Goddard, that every time someone is deaf and dumb, that this means that they have an evil spirit? No, it does not mean that they all have an evil spirit. Some people have a physical uh, disablement, maybe from birth. And so not everybody who is deaf and dumb has an evil spirit. This is why we need the gifts, all of the gifts of the spirit. So it, we shouldn't just go to somebody who's deaf and dumb and now all of a sudden say, you deaf and dumb spirit, come out, because the person may not have a spirit. Some people say, well, when in doubt, cast out. Well, I don't go along with that theory. You see, we need to know, is the problem a physical one or is it a spiritual one? Jesus, on one occasion, you remember, he touched somebody's tongue with some spit, right? And the man began to speak, right? And in other cases, he cast out a deaf and dumb spirit. I want to give you several little illustrations on this to show you what we're talking about. First of all, this was in the uh, city of Penang in uh, Malaysia and we were having some beautiful meetings there in the church and I tell you the power of God was moving in a spectacular way a woman had brought a little boy I would I don't know how old because sometimes they're smaller for their age but I would say around 10 years old according to our height of 10 year olds and he was a beautiful looking child and the woman came up to me and she said look my my boy is deaf and dumb he can't speak and he can't hear and I said, okay. She said, please, would you pray for him? Pray for him that he will be healed. And I said, yes, we will do that. So I turned to the little boy, and I turned him around to face me so that he could see me. And I looked at him into his eyes, and I said, do you know Jesus? Have you ever heard about the name of Jesus? And the mother nudged me. You know, she says, he can't hear. He can't speak. And I said, I know. I know. She didn't realize that I was doing this for the purpose of the people who were there. So I said again to the little boy, do you know Jesus? And he stood there and looked at me with a blank look, didn't respond as though he didn't hear a thing I said, as though nothing was there. So I turned him around now to face the audience. And I said through the microphone so that everybody could hear, there must have been at least 1,500, 2,000 people there at that meeting. I said to the little boy in his ear by way of the microphone, have you ever known Jesus? Do you know Jesus as your personal savior? And the boy stood and looked blank at the audience, the same blank that he looked at me as though he heard nothing and as though I had said nothing. Well, the next thing that happened, <laughs> I took away the microphone and I whispered Jesus. Well, pardon me, I kept the microphone there and I whispered Jesus into his ear. Jesus. Again, he stood there looking blank. I put my hand on the top of his head at the back, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you cursed, deaf, and dumb spirit, come out of him. And you know what the boy did? He stood there quiet for a moment, and I leaned down, took the microphone again, and said in his ear, Jesus, the boy threw up his hands, and he said, praise the Lord.
This was in the write-up in the Straight Times. I'm not telling you a fairy tale, I'm telling fact. The writer says, I am not as a rule what you would call a believer, but in fairness to Canadian Mary Goddard, I must admit I witnessed quite a few remarkable sights at the three night sessions in which Mary had recently held here in the church. This Mary Goddard, in brackets a grandmother, would tell the congregation is not a magic show. I am not a medium. I do not go into a trance. I do not work wonders, not in my name anyway but I can give you a touch of God. A touch of God, a renewal of faith, a promise of a cure, that was what the crowds came for. And this is true. They wanted a touch from Jesus. There was no advanced publicity, no frantic buildup, no fanfare, yet the word spread. And by the hundreds came the sick, the maimed, and the suffering. Also the believers and the unbelievers, the faithful of all creeds as well as cynics of all shades. The second evening, by all accounts, was the most astounding. I couldn't see it very well, but the wife and many others, including a hard-boiled colleague, were taken aback when one little boy, deaf and dumb from birth, suddenly clapped his hands and said, Thank you, Jesus, as soon as Mary Goddard breathed a prayer into his ear. And I didn't breathe a prayer into his ear. All I said was the name of Jesus. Praise God. This one had an, a spirit, a deaf and dumb spirit, which was there from birth. And the power of Jesus Christ, by a way of the dis first, the, it, that was discerned, it was a spirit. Secondly, then, by the gift of faith, and the gift of performing of miracles, the evil spirit was then cast out. And that's the way it works. Now, people say to me, well, Mary, uh, is it always the case then that a person immediately uh, speaks fluently when a spirit is cast out? Do sometimes not they have to learn to speak again? Yes, in some cases this is true. I'll give you another incident. This was up north in the town of Sungapatangi, way up north. And what happened is the meetings were so full that there was no room. I'm not fooling you, there was no room in the aisles. This was one of our last meetings. And we'd asked the people, please, to leave just a little bit of room so that those that were touched by the healing power of Jesus Christ could come up and testify to what God has done to, for them. Now let me tell you that we're ministering to people who know everybody else. And people are not fooled. And they know when they're healed. They know when their pain is gone. They know when spirits have come out. And uh, the place was so full. I have a, a picture of this. Somebody was taking pictures, and I was not aware of it. And I'm standing here with a little podium in front of me, and people are literally standing right up in front of the podium because there is no more place for them to either stand or sit. They're standing outside the doors and the windows. And I'm beginning to minister now the things of the Spirit and the power gifts of the Spirit. And all of a sudden, over to my left, I see a woman. Uh, she's a beautiful Indian woman. She is jumping up and down. She is so excited, and she's making the sign of the cross over and over and over. And she's so excited, and she, my, she looks radiant. Well, I knew that Jesus had touched her, obviously. So I said, look, uh, how are we going to get this woman up here? I spoke in English. I said, honey, are, have you been healed? And she kept pointing to her mouth and to her ears. So I realized that she had been healed. Uh, she could hear and speak, but I couldn't hear her. So um, she didn't understand me. I thought, well, maybe she's Tamil speaking. So I called the Tamil interpreter, and I said, speak to her and ask her if she's been healed. And she shook her head, yes, I've been healed. So you know what they had to do? They had to pick her up bodily where she was and pass her hand over hand over to where I was standing. And they dumped her right down in front of my podium. I have a picture of this. And this woman literally was a miracle of healing. Now, I don't know if a spirit came out or if she was a miracle of healing by way of a natu the natural cause, but whatever it was, she could now speak and hear. But she didn't speak English. She spoke her mother tongue, Tamil, but it was only a few sounds or syllables. Now, this woman had to learn how to speak, all right? So there's many varieties of ways, but I don't know whether it was a spirit that was cast out or not there. 
I just know she was healed. Come back next time. Well, yeah, I've got some more exciting things to share with you on the gift of the discerning of spirits. <laughs>